Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Reversing Hashimoto's. I'm your show host, Dr. Anshul Gupta, world's Hashimoto's expert. I help people reverse their Hashimoto's through personalized functional medicine plans. And today I'm really excited for this particular episode because today's guest is really special. He's a dear friend and he has been into health industry for more than 40 years you know, creating content and sharing information on a whole bunch of topics. And today the topic is also very, very useful. One thing which we have never covered before, especially connecting your oral health, you know, with your thyroid disorders. So, and we have so much different things to cover, including mercury fillings, root canal treatments, oral inflammation, gum health, so much more. So please tune into this episode so that you can get the full information. But let me introduce our guest first before we jump into this great discussion. So my guest today is Jonathan Landsman. For nearly 40 years, Jonathan has been in the health and fitness industry and is a creator of Natural Health 365 programscom one of the most popular natural health websites in the world. Throughout his career on the internet, Jonathan has created over 500 online programs with over 300 of the brightest minds in natural health and science. He's a creator of many online educational programs, including the Holistic Oral Health Summit and Stop Cancer Docu Class. To learn more about Jonathan's programs, please visit naturalhealth365programs.com. Jonathan, welcome over here. Anshul, it is an absolute pleasure to be with you today because we, one, I love being with you and talking to you about health. Number two, we have an extremely important topic. I couldn't agree with you more when we're talking about something that most people never hear about and absolutely is the direct cause of so many health problems, most certainly thyroid disorders. So thank you very much for having me on your program. Absolutely. You know, I think, you know, like when my st I started my functional health journey, I had no idea that a systemic disease like thyroid or Hashimoto's could be connected with our oral health. So when I was introduced to this even concept, I said, well, maybe we are talking just about mercury fillings. But then the more I digged into that, I realized there is so much inflammation, so many chronic infections, and so many people don't even realize what is going on in their mouth is actually affecting their whole body. So I'm glad that you are talking about this important topic of oral health. But tell us a little bit more about like different kinds of things, you know, that affect people with thyroid disorders, you know, different aspects of oral health. So people are aware of what they are going to hear about. Sure. Anshul, really quick, just to address something that you made me think about it there at the beginning here with what you just said. I think for so many people, it is generally difficult for people to associate these things because, again, think about conventional medicine. It really just, when somebody gets exposed to that, you have a heart problem. Let's look closely at the heart. You have a brain problem. Let's look closely at the brain. You have a thyroid disorder. Let's just really examine the thyroid, the hormones that are going on, what's being released, how the thyroid functions, how we can manipulate the way the thyroid functions, all of these things about how the thyroid works. But they don't look systemically, so I love that word that you used, systemic issues that are actually polluting the thyroid and causing the thyroid to not work well. So again, this is something I want people to pay close attention to. Whenever they're dealing with any kind of serious health problem, Let's look, number one, at how do we avoid toxins. The older I get, Anshul, the more I realize, yes, organic food is great, supplements are great, but if you are not being acutely aware every single day of your life, because things change as you get older, what might I be exposed to, too much so in terms of toxins that could be hurting my health? Because all those other things are great, exercise and eating well, but if we're overexposed to toxins, it's pretty much for the most part going to overwrite all those other things that we're trying to do. And in a lot of cases, I hear people so frustrated about their health because they're not dealing with those toxins. So oral health, 
and the toxins. Number one, Anshul, most certainly are mercury-based silver fillings. Now, for a long time, Anshul, we've talked about this in the past, you and I, I had dozen, over a dozen mercury-based silver fillings in my upper right, lower right, lower left, and upper left, all over my mouth, put in when I was younger, had no idea about any kind of threats. In fact, if you go on the internet and you look up mercury-based silver fillings, they'll tell you it's a very inexpensive way to restore the tooth after you get a cavity. The dentist drills out the tooth, puts in a mercury-based silver filling with all kinds of metals. These are neurotoxic metals, most certainly mercury, a heavy metal, which is over 50% of that silver filling that they put into your mouth, is mercury. This is, again, neurotoxic. What happens is, conventionally speaking, for decades, they've been assuring people, oh, don't worry about it. When that gets put into your mouth, it's nice and hard. It's inexpensive, as I said, and it'll last a long time. But what they don't tell you is, Every time you're brushing your teeth, every time you're chewing on hot food or some cold food, you're drinking hot and cold beverages, that mercury-based silver filling is leaching out in vapors that you breathe in all this mercury into your system little by little every single day. You're also mixing that mercury-based silver filling, all those metals with your saliva and swallowing it into your digestive tract. Anshul, I'm sure you've covered this so many times in the past, that a leaky gut, poor gut function, has everything to do with poor thyroid function. So all of this toxicity from just mercury-based silver fillings pours into the rest of the body, through the saliva, into the gut, goes through the digestive tract, mixes with the blood, and then that's where the rest of the body gets toxic. The thyroid is taking up this toxicity and that's where it's really a big problem. So naturally to solve that, we can talk about that if you like. Certainly the most important thing would be, you can't do this yourself. You have to find a good biological dentist who will do a safe extraction. That's exactly what I did on four different visits. I went and got all four quadrants of my mouth cleaned up. Thank God I did. I tell you, Anshul, that was probably one of the best things I ever did for my health. And uh, that's what I strongly encourage lots of people to do on their own, you know, and we can talk about the other things as well. But, you know, this is a biggie, Anshul. And a lot of people, they don't even necessarily know that they have them. Mm -hmm. I ask so many people, a lot of times when they get those these uh, teeth repaired and they might put like some filling on top that isn't mercury at all, right? It's a newer dentist. They go in to repair something or they put a cap on and they put a crown, right? This kind of thing. A lot of times they'll say, I don't have mercury-based silver fillings, but the truth is they do and they're not even aware of it. So this is a very big problem and a great source of toxicity that could be messing up people's thyroids. Absolutely. Yeah. I think this is one of the top toxins that people deal with mercury. And we already have so many research studies, as you pointed out, that mercury can damage the thyroid gland. And again, a very important thing, like, you know, as you mentioned, people think that when they open their mouth, if they don't see any silver in their mouth, that means they don't have mercury. And as you correctly pointed out, that is not correct because you might have mercury, which is hidden. Even to the point that some of the dentists will say, well, I put a crown on there. Now your mercury is safe inside. It is not going to leach, right? But you and me know that is not true. That mercury is going to slowly and slowly leach out. And then you are going to absorb it all through your GI tract and other systems into your blood, right? A hundred percent. And there are other areas. Would you like me to talk about uh, number two? It's a biggie. Absolutely. Please go ahead. Okay, so we're going to talk about root canal treated teeth. Please do not shoot the messenger. Again, I want to remind everybody that in nearly 40 years I've been in the natural health industry helping people with their health. It's only recently, say within the past decade, that in doing all of the programs I created, including the Holistic Oral Health Summit, that I spoke to so many dentists in the trenches who have told me over and over again, and this is a real shocker, Anshul, but it's the truth. And somebody could just simply 
get a test to prove in their situation that it's happening to them. Every single root canal treated tooth, when it gets extracted, including my wife who had several of them taken out as well, you don't even have to have a medical degree, PhD, nothing of a sort. When those get extracted, you can smell the stench and you can actually see the pus. Every dentist that I have spoken to who really gets it about health has said that they are all infected in time. Now, certainly when you get a, a you know root canal treatment, when that gets done initially, sure, it may not be really that infected, but most people, and she'll, they're having them for years and years sitting in their mouth. There's no pain at all, and yet they are fully infected. And again, the problem is it doesn't stay just in and around the tooth. This is pouring into the rest of the body, the lymphatic system, your bloodstream. This is getting in. It's causing so many problems in the gut, for sure, which is important for our immune system, our thyroid function our hormonal balance, all of these things that I know, Anshul, the people who listen to your program, they're very interested in this, right? So they're taking mm -hmm. the supplements, they're exercising, I'm sure many of them are. They're meditating, they're eating the best that they can. They may perhaps be taking hormone replacement therapy, but if someone is struggling with their health, let's go back to the very first thing I said, you must get rid of your greatest toxic burdens. And there is no doubt these teeth are infected. At the end, Anshul, I'm going to be talking about something that I have really not spoken about publicly. So I want everybody to stick around to the end because we're going to talk about something that is truly, no exaggeration at all, a real game changer, a lifesaver, and it's going to help people to detect whether they have infections or not. But there is no doubt, Anshul, root canal treated teeth are dead teeth. Nowhere else in medicine is medicine actually leaving a dead body part in you after a procedure. But in these root canal treatments, it happens. Somebody has a cavity, they fill it, the person goes back to the dentist, oh, it's not working, my tooth still hurts me. Oh, okay, millions and millions of people are told We'll just simply do a root canal. We will take out the nerve. You'll be able to save your tooth. So it's actually told to people as a really great way to save the teeth that you have. This is still a really serious problem. As I've said, they will get infected. And if someone has immune system issues, they're struggling with serious health problems, they have to get these root canal treated teeth out. Now, I can hear the voices out there, Anshul. They're talking about, what do you mean? It's in the front of my mouth. I don't want to be without a tooth or it's in the back and I, I won't be able to chew. Of course, this has to be reviewed with a really qualified biological dentist who can talk about a lot of different options, Anshul. And there are solutions. You can get you know, bridges. You could, of course, get an implant as well. That's a possibility. It just depends on where it's located and to be quite honest with you, in a lot of cases for older people, or even maybe for younger people, if it's all the way in the back and it's the last tooth and it's really not gonna cause much of an issue for that individual, they might just carefully extract that tooth, not get it root canal treated, clean it all out properly. And of course, ozone is very important. If your dentist is not using ozone, to try to neutralize any kind of bad buggies in the mouth, it's time to find another dentist that does. But obviously, if all of that is done, in some cases, a person could just pull the tooth out and just leave it alone and they would be fine. Again, of course, Anshul, this greatly depends on the structure of their mouth, how many good teeth do they still have left, where that tooth is that's being pulled, you know, its placement in relationship to others. So a lot of factors. But Without a doubt, my simple message is this. If you're struggling with any kind of serious health problems, especially if you're doing a lot of things already and you're still struggling, if you have those root canal treated teeth, you've got to get them out. In fact, Anshul, uh, you and I both know the research is very clear. These infections absolutely pollute the bloodstream in and around the heart in particular. 
it does, these toxins do attack the thyroid gland. And in the end, something nobody wants to hear, a diagnosis of cancer, the risk goes way up if that infection in that tooth is left in the body for a long time and you ignore these things. So for a lot of people, this message is very important. I know. And that's, again, an interesting factor. I have, I've worked with several, like, you know, thousands of Hashimoto's patients who, whose, whose immune system is completely shot. We do a bunch of things, and a lot of times their inflammation levels are not coming down, like HSCRP or ESR, and they feel otherwise fine. And then sometimes, you know, like the inflammation is actually in their mouth. You know, then now these days they have this a three complete 360-degree X-ray, which the, a lot of biological dentists can do now which can find these occult infections which are present. Then a lot of these times, you're absolutely correct. These do happen in older root canal you know, tooth, which are lying over there. It's just, just kind of sitting over there for like bacteria to come in there and knock them off. And then, you know, that infection keeps brewing in, ultimately spill over in the blood and obviously attacks the thyroid. So I think that is a difficult message for people but they have to listen to it, especially if you're not getting better or really, really sick. And I think Jonathan has a very important message for you. Without a doubt, Ancho. I'd like to cover the third aspect of the mouth that is, again, affecting a lot of people out there. And, you know, to be gentle about this, unfortunately, it's being ignored, not necessarily the fault of the individual, but certainly most of conventional dentistry is not doing a good enough job educating people. Can we go over that now? Absolutely. Please go ahead. So, yeah, let's talk about gum disease. Now, of course, Anshul, there is the one that's popular on the internet. If you look up gum disease, you have all these gross pictures of people's mouths, you know, rotting out from whatever, the early 1900s to present time, right? But that's not all that I'm talking about. Obviously, that's a serious problem for somebody's health. I'm talking about the gum disease that goes for millions of people undetected. How do I know if I have gum disease? It's a very simple test. Doesn't take much at all. If you're brushing your teeth and you spit out and you see a little bit of blood, you have gum disease. If you have a soreness, and for a lot of people, they have to Take a moment to become more aware. Be honest with themselves. If there's a soreness in the upper or lower gum areas, there is some form of gum disease going on there. Now, for a lot of people, that's often ignored. If you go to the dentist and you get a dental cleaning, there's a lot of bleeding during a cleaning. In so many cases, people are told, oh, that's normal because we're poking around with these instruments. What they don't tell you and in a lot of cases, it's not even checked, are the gum pockets. Anshul, I would venture to say that over 90% of the people listening to your program have no idea what the size of their gum pockets are for each and every tooth. And I'm being conservative. It's probably more like over 95%. And that's, again, not so much the fault of the individual, now everybody's aware of it that's listening to this program. But when you go into a dental office and you get a cleaning, they're just not checking. And even if they do check, they do such a poor job at actually calling out the numbers and letting the individual in the chair know what those numbers are and talk to them about the significance of those numbers. Really quick, Anshul. You want to hear when somebody takes that probe, a dental hygienist takes a, it's a slightly uncomfortable, very thin probe that they use where they stick it into the gum line, right? To measure your gum pockets. You want to hear for the front, the outer part, and the inside of every tooth you have. You want to hear numbers like one, two, or three. When you hear four, five, six, and seven and beyond, obviously those gum pockets are a lot bigger. And what's the problem with this? It allows for bacteria to pour into infections to pour into the rest of the body. The bottom line is you want your gums to be healthy, pink, not bleeding, and tight to the tooth, to each and every tooth, okay? So that's very important to understand about whether you have any kind of gum disease or not. Another important point 
again, when you go with the right dentist and you get a really good hygienist, which is not always easy to find, but worth its weight more than its weight in gold. And that is each time you go to the dental office, now that you know the number, you want to make sure that those numbers stay steady. Obviously, it's significant. If you see a lot of one, two, and threes, you hear that from your hygienist, and then you go another. Like if you have a lot of health problems, I would strongly suggest you go every quarter. Don't go once a year, but each quarter that you go every three months. If you hear that you had one, two, or threes all over your mouth from the visit before, and now all of a sudden on the lower right side, it's four or five around a tooth, then you now know that you need to do a little bit more work at home to get those gums to go back to being a lot tighter. And really quick, Angel, because I know we're pressed for time. Mm -hmm. Hydrofloss is a bucket of water in a unit that people can buy. It's not that expensive at all, but a hydrofloss is a great way to shoot water in a very small, thin stream, shoot it right around the gum lines on the outside of the teeth and on the inside. And a hydrofloss unit, especially if you have bigger gum pockets, you'll be very happy to hear that you can actually reverse gum disease very naturally by wipe, by bringing down those gum pockets. Very, very simple thing you can do at home. And again, depending on your pocket size, you may have to do one, two, or even three times a day. Another big thing about gum disease, if you have it going on, you've got to be very careful. The sticky food you're eating, a lot of sugary food, and especially not cleaning out your mouth properly before you go to sleep. And all that sugary stuff is just, festering inside your mouth, that is not a good thing. So again, this is a very important thing that must be dealt with. Get it right, and the whole rest of your body is going to be so much healthier. Your immune system will be ready to go after the things that it really ought to be going after. For me, Anshul, it's like looking for cancer cells or something more serious than that, your body is going to be so much more at ease not having to deal with infections, that's going to be great for your hormonal balance and it's going to be terrific for improving your thyroid health. So that's a biggie for number three. And of course we can jump into, because I know we don't have a lot more time left, what I'd like to really discuss a little bit more, but that's up to you. Sure, sure. So one thing actually comes into my mind when you say about these bigger gum pockets, the thing that comes into my mind is leaky gut, right? Very similar to leaky gut, like they're big holes in between the gut junctions and how things can pass through that, especially toxins and chronic infections and causes damage. Similarly, these big gum pockets are source of, you know, bad bacteria, food and all those things entering into your system and causing systemic inflammation. Is that kind of similar, like, you know, way that things work? A hundred percent. Again, systemically thinking about things, having that holistic mindset is what's so important. It's what I said earlier on. If people go back and listen to this program again, I'm sure it's going to be 100% more helpful. But the bottom line is when tissues, anything is happening inside your mouth, are breaking down the integrity of the health of your mouth, that is absolutely representative of other cells in your body and tissues in your body. So most definitely, if tissue is breaking down in your mouth, there's bleeding, there's inflammation, there most certainly is a breakdown of your cellular inte integrity elsewhere. You're going to have more of a systemic inflammation, and this is constantly putting stress on people's bodies. I only wish, Anshul, that when something like this would have first happened, wouldn't it be great if there was some sort of alarm bell that went off, maybe on our phone. What a great app that would be. And it would just alert people, hey, pay attention. Something's happening to you. So many more people would jump to it. So again, we don't have that. So it's important to have programs like this to understand how we can help ourselves in a more natural way on a daily basis. Because you know what the old adage is, Anshul? No news is good news. So when we keep checking in with our physicians and our dentists, and they're looking specifically at certain things, and we see that everything is fine, and we're feeling great, that's what we want all the years of our life, no matter how long we live. 
Absolutely. I think those are great pointers and great things that you spoke about. So I will let you continue about the other thing that you're going to talk about. Well, actually, spoiler alert, right? You certainly let it out of the bag there, if you will, uh, earlier on. You did mention it just a few minutes back. But this is very important, much more than most people know, because they're not being exposed to this simple test that should be done. And it is a cone beam CT. So that's what people should be asking for, it is a 3D x-ray of their mouth Anshul, I've been doing this a long time. You have your bite wing x-rays. They just kind of put in one certain area of your mouth and they move it along. People know about those snapshots that have been taken for a long time. They have these panoramic x-rays, right? And they maybe on the surface, they appear like, wow, they're so much more detail. They are 2D, right? So they'll you'll put your head into a device kind of holding still. And then, of course, the machine goes around and scans your mouth. But the bottom line is, Anshul, these panoramic x-rays are still two-dimensional and don't show nearly enough. I'm going to get to why this is so important. A cone beam CT scan, right? A 3D x-ray that people should ask for. If a dentist does not have this machine, it is an expensive machine, and most dentists don't then I strongly suggest that you travel somewhere to get it done and to have that result of that X-ray, that 3D X-ray examined by someone that is qualified, really knows how to read them. They have good software because what happens with this kind of X-ray is you can see all areas of your mouth from all different positions. And it is quite revealing when people have infections. In most cases, Anshul, the problem here is an infected mouth causing all these problems that we talked about today, heart problems, cancer concerns, thyroid dysfunction, and even adrenal dysfunction. We didn't talk about that, but for sure, in one of my programs, if you're so stressed out with toxins and your adrenals are stressed, a lot of times just taking care of removing that stress, the adrenals functioning better, you're thyroid will function better, but that's probably for another discussion. The bottom line is these uh, cone beam x-rays, this is very important because you will find infections that don't cause any pain at all. And it's very important to understand that when people get their teeth extracted from their mouth, whether it's properly extracted or not improperly uh, extracted, where they haven't taken out the ligament, really cleaned it out well, person seems like they heal just fine, they walk around with no pain at all. Te teeth that are extracted, absolutely that area can, be can become infected in time and not hurt at all. Another aspect of this is anybody that's got crowns in their mouth, that again is a greater risk for that person to perhaps get an infection later on, have no pain whatsoever, and it remains undetected unless they get this kind of a 3D X-ray. So these things are very important to understand. You don't necessarily have pain in many cases. And for my wife, my mother-in-law, and for so many people I have spoken to, we've had a lot of personal experience with this, Anshul, in the past year. It has been a mind-blowing experience how much you learn from getting this kind of an X-ray done. It is well worth it. And if you're with a dentist that says, oh, that's not really that important unless you're doing some sort of intricate surgery, then you get it done. If they said that to you, then it's time to get another dentist. I assure you, anybody listening to this program, if you get this done and you find infections before it's too late, a lot of times these infections can get bigger and bigger with no pain at all and breach into the sinus cavity and beyond you don't want this kind of thing to be polluting your body with toxins all the time. So again, these x-rays are very important and you make it a part of all the visits that you're doing with your dentist. Obviously, you don't have to do this every time you're going in, but you do want to make sure you get a good check with this kind of an x-ray. Absolutely. I think that was a very big and important point that you brought up is that 
you know, we are always talking about prevention, right? You know, so we don't want to wait until that infection gets spread out into your whole body or start damaging your body. And then you have to take those heavy doses of antibiotics, which again wrecks, you know, havoc on your gut. And then everything goes south from there, right? So we definitely want to prevent getting these infections. And the best thing is obviously knowing about them in initial stages. So you can kind of take care of them right then and there. So I think very important point, please, guys, you know, ask for 3D cone x-rays. I think I have not gotten that. So I am going to ask my dentist next time I'm going over there because I go to a biological dentist too. And uh, we have never spoken about it. Maybe he didn't bring it up. So I think I'm going to talk about it to him and get these 3D x-rays. Do we have uh, one more moment to drop something on people? Absolutely. Let's go for it. Okay, so with this, as I said to you before, we've had a lot of personal experience with this in the past year, Anshul. It's been uh, extraordinary. Let me give you an example of what I mean about the, the lack of effectiveness when it comes to a 2D x-ray, those panoramic x-rays. For quite some time, I was told in my upper right, my upper left, I have cavitations. That's not cavities, everybody. That's cavitations, right? A really serious infection in my mouth. You got to take care of it. Now I feel fine, Anshul, right? No pain. And I feel pretty darn good every day. I wake up at 4, 4.30 in the morning. I do a pretty long day. I got a lot of things going on. But this has bothered me for a long time is that a dentist, a really good qualified biological dentist relies only on 2D x-rays saying, oh yes, you have these two cavitations and we've got to do the work of, you know, cutting into the gum, getting up and in there, you know, and just digging it all out, all the rotted area, whatever might be in there, right to the bone. We'll clean it up nice, you know, patch you back up and you will be good to go and you'll have these cavitations removed. Now, I would recommend that for anybody. The problem is I went, <clears throat> excuse me, I went to another dentist where I just moved here in Florida who had a 3D x-ray, the ability to give that to me with great software, state-of-the-art equipment, relatively brand new, did the, did the x-ray, sat down with him, and with his software, took his mouse, went around with my mouth, and clicked onto the bone area of my upper right and my upper left. And the bone numbers are solid, high positive numbers on the computer screen with the software. You see this, Anshul, black and white. Now, what does that really mean? He goes up with his mouse up a little higher beyond my bone into my sinus cavity where it's a hollowed out, nothing's there. And the number goes way down to a negative number back and forth, back and forth. And he shows me how the number changes over and over again. It's not just one time a fluke. And on the right and left side, he says to me, Jonathan, you're fine. It's okay. You had those wisdom teeth taken out and your bone area is looking really solid and great. I see no cavitation. And these are two very experienced biological dentists who use ozone, they're into everything we're talking about. That's how crazy this can get. But mm. hopefully after this program, Anshul, nothing is crazy for anybody listening. They're crystal clear. If you want to know if you have any infections in your mouth, this is a great way of determining whether something is going on or not. And then, yes, of course, in the end, the only way to truly know is a good dentist gets into your mouth with his tools and then just feels and checks an area. But that x-ray is very telling. And for a lot of people walking around with infections that are undetected, this could literally be a lifesaver. Absolutely. I think that's a very important point of knowing whether you have these chronic infections or inflammation going on in your mouth so you can tackle that very easily. So I think we covered a whole bunch of things, you know, this, in, like, you know, this is like an information packed session about mercury toxins, about root canal treatments, as well as, you know, gum health and how to take care of things. 
mean, what kind of, you know, uh, tips you have for people who want to keep their oral health in good shape, especially for thyroid patients and Hashimoto's patients? You're going to hear the average, you know, brush each day, you know, obviously away from the gums, don't brush into the gums, you know, and floss. That's very nice to remove uh, material. But as I mentioned before, hydrofloss, absolutely so important. A bucket of water, you may have to go through one bucket, a second bucket as well, especially if people notice that when they use a hydrofloss, there's blood that goes into the sink. Obviously doing it for several days, in many cases, you actually see the blood go away. That's a great sign. That means your tissue is cleaner. There's healing that's taking place. And that's the barrier you want to keep the bad guys out. There's sea salt water rinses as well from people that have little aches and pains or sensitivity in their mouth. This can do wonders for you in one or two days, swishing a few times a day. It's so simple to just sort of shrink up, if you will, and reduce that inflammation. So many other things that can be done really relate back to the one thing I mentioned before. You really have to be careful how much sugar you're eating. You know, I was guilty of this in the past, these organic energy bars. I'm very athletic, very active, Anshul. So you go out there for a lot of hours, you know, maybe there's a banana, but, you know, in this Florida heat, taking a banana or something fresh out there is not always like the easiest thing. An energy bar, super easy, right? Great, all organic. So these organic ingredients and these sticky bars, not a really good idea to have in and around the mouth, especially if you have, you know, big gum pockets or infections that you're concerned about, you have health problems. So really cut down on how much sugar you're eating in general is just a really good thing. You have to be careful, especially vegans out there. I was one for decades, a vegan, way too much sugar, honey, oatmeal, fruit smoothies, fruit juices, not vegetable based, spiked with a little fruit. That's okay to make it nice and tasty. But if you lean heavily into a lot of these organic sugary things and you think, hey, this is great, I'm a vegan, Anshul, I can tell you from personal experience, in the end, it catches up to you. Okay, there are a lot of things that happen, but overall, it's just not good for keeping inflammation down. And it's not good for your overall energy and brain function, which is a very big deal for me, Anshul, since my father of blessed memory, he passed away from Alzheimer's. So again, I think about these things, no pun intended, all the time. I'm passionate about finding ways to optimize how good I feel. And so Taking really good care of the mouth is important. I use essential oils, just one drop, and I'll rub it on my gums. It's a great fresh way to, I mean, it's a great way to make your mouth feel so fresh. I use peppermint, neem, and clove. It's a combo type essential oil blend and just one or two drops in and around the gums and the mouth feels great. So these are things I do to keep my mouth healthy. And I certainly know that it's helping to guard my health in so many other ways as well. And I encourage everybody to do the same. Absolutely, Jonathan. I mean, there were so many great tips that people can use everyday basis to get their gum health back in shape. So thank you so much. And I think that's where, you know, I really like about that you have been so passionate about health for such a long time that shows up into all of your programs that you have online. So I will recommend each and every person over here, please go to naturalhealth365programs.com. Jonathan has created tons of educational information over there. So check it out so you can get advantage of it. Jonathan, please tell people more about those programs, how they can find you. Well, thank you, Anshul. De definitely go to naturalhealth365programs.com. It's a very simple site. You can scroll down the home page when you arrive. There's all of my different programs. The biggie, of course, we're talking about today is the Holistic Oral Health Summit. But we have all kinds of other educational programs. People can click on those programs and check them out and see all the things that we offer. And uh, I encourage everybody to do that because, again, prevention is not exactly the sexiest thing in the world. But there is nothing like taking really good care of our health. And as we feel healthier and healthier, a lot of these unwanted symptoms 
they just fade away. Absolutely. That is so correct. We'll have all this information in the show notes. So please check it out, you know, about these links. Jonathan, again, thank you so much for coming over here and discussing this great topic. I'm really happy with this discussion. It was really dense and rich with information. So thank you so much. Thank you, Anshul. I really appreciate you very much. Absolutely. All right, guys, this is it for, for this time. We will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.